Hello, and today we will be discussing the Microsoft app that's available to us called Stream. So what exactly is Microsoft Stream? And it's actually an enterprise video service within Microsoft 365. It allows users to upload, view, share, and uh, share video securely. It also, the purpose really is to enhance communication and collaboration, but also facilitate the knowledge sharing and training. The key features of Microsoft Stream is that there's secure video sharing. So you could have access control within your organization. So you could share videos very similarly to sharing uh, documents. There's also the integration with Office 365 apps, such as Teams, SharePoint, et cetera. When you record a meeting in Teams, it actually is shared and saved within Stream. There's also automatic transcription captioning, so it has AI-generated transcripts for accessibility purposes. There's also intelligent search, so you can search within the video transcripts for what uh, topics you're looking for. And there's mobile app accessibility, so you can watch and upload videos on the go. Some of the benefits of using Microsoft Stream, so that you have improved communication, so that you could have visual content enhances understanding, particularly if you're recording uh, lectures or topics for your classes. There's a centralized content repository, so it's easy access to all video content. It also enhances collaboration, so you can share insights across teams and you can actually work on projects together. And there's compliance and security uh, benefits, so it meets industry standards and regulations. So let's take a look on accessing Stream. So there are many ways to access uh, Stream in your Microsoft 365 tools. For this purpose, we went to Microsoft365.com and then logged in with my New York Tech uh, login ID. You want to go to the nine uh, dots here, which is the app launcher. And when you click on here, many of the apps that are available to you will appear. For today, we're gonna to go to stream. You will see that the stream will give you several different options. You can upload a file or a, a video into it. There's screen recording, camera recording. You could create a playlist. Then there's a video project. A video project is will actually provide you with a lot more editing functionality than any of the other recordings that you could do where you have basic uh, video recording or editing aspects. Video project will allow you to have a lot more of the opportunities to edit it and make the video your own. So when you click on screen recording, this is actually what you see. What's really great about this uh, recording is you actually have your camera available to you in a corner around corner. So what is really cool is you can actually move it around based on where you would like yourself to be. You can also make yourself bigger and smaller uh, on your preference. And then if you say, you know what, we don't need to have a talking head. We could just uh, or show myself. I could actually just do the, uh, the screen capture. You can actually just click camera and it will turn off the camera and it will only do the screen capture. A couple of the other features right here is you could actually have the mic uh, muted or unmuted, obviously to make sure that you have the correct mic uh, available to you. We also also have a screen here so you can uh, either screen share or not screen share. If you wanna upload a, a script, you can actually upload a script right here. There's also effects available to you. So you can see that you could add text, you could do a backdrop, uh, stickers, filter, frame, uh, have a whiteboard and a photo. I encourage you to uh, play around with each one of these effects to see how it could benefit your teaching or your recordings. In order to start a screen recording, all you have to do is click start screen record and it will pop up this uh, option to have the entire uh, availability. So when you actually go to start screen recording, it will actually pop up this option of Chrome tabs that you can have um, to share, what windows you have open that you could share, or you could just simply share an entire screen. Obviously, as you can see, I have three different screens, so it gives me each option that I have. 
Once you're done recording your uh, lecture or your presentation that you are doing, it will be saved uh, in your stream options. So you can see that I have it recommended. So these are some recent ones that I have uh, talked about or even addressed. And then you have all of your recordings, some recent ones created by me, projects, playlists, and then those that are associated with the meeting. So as I mentioned, the uh, team meeting recordings are automatically fed into stream. So if you are recording on team meetings, you could actually see I clicked on meeting and here is a meeting that I had um, recorded. If I go to the three dots of it says more options when i click on here it gives me some options that i have so i can open it i can share it i can add to so this is a to-do list i could add okay i have to do this i could favorite it there's also tags available so if i want to tag this as admissions or tag this as um, global health population course. I could actually tag these videos so I can then search the tags to be able to access uh, the videos more widely available. This is really great if you are creating a lot of lectures for specific courses and you could create tags for each course. I'm going to also hide this video, download it, or delete it. So, say for example, if we want to edit this uh, video, so we're going to click it to the video. And it'll pop it up into a new thing. It will automatically bring all of this information. So let's just look into this. So this is the actual video itself. You can see that it expires in five days. So what's really important about this, uh, the uh, videos that you have, particularly of mo movie recordings or uh, recordings themselves is that they will expire and be deleted. So you want to be very mindful of that of once you have done the editing, you can move on. Since this was a meeting in Teams, that is why there's an expiration date. So a couple options that you have is that you have trim. So on this uh, right hand side, you have trim. You also have chapters. So if you click on here, you could actually create your own chapters. Um, available and this will actually make it easier for students to go through a lecture so they can just review like wait a minute I do not quite understand that concept let me go back and reread it you also have the options so you can see that you have a transcript so it can actually create an AI generated transcript so since this is AI generated and not human based you want to make sure that you are reviewing all of the transcripts to ensure that they are accurate I will be um, mentioned that jargon in uh, scientific terms, AI is getting better at identifying them, but you still want to make sure that you review it to make sure it is accurate. Also, interactivity. So you can actually add interactivity. You can add a form. So if you want to take, do a pop-up quiz, you could do that, as well as a call-out. So if you want to bring real attention to something in the video, you could do that as well. There's comments, so if you would like to have a comment on this, you could also say uh, delete all comments and uh, you could do timeline comments. So if you want the students to be able to create timeline comments on here as well or for yourself, you can, uh, if you're working on a project with a team, you could actually create a timeline comment um, that brings highlights information that you may need to look over uh, for other students or other uh, people individuals who are working on the project. There's also video settings. So this is where you can add a thumbnail. You could talk about the about the video, transcripts and captions. So you could actually say the like, you know, where the transcript and captions are. Um, there's chapters. Do you want to turn them on or off? Interactivity on or off? Uh, all of this. There's also no uh, noise suppression. So this is really uh, interesting if there's other um, sounds or music in the background you can actually uh, identify if you want to have that noise there or not you can actually also add audio files so if there's uh, audio descriptions or language voiceovers that you would like to use you can actually increase that as well what's great is there's also user analytics so you can say that there's all-time statistics as well as statistics over time so you can actually see how many individuals are actually watching your video uh, in stream 
and then you have the um, interactivity. So if there was any interactivity here, you would be able to see it. I will go to trim because this is one of those uh, options that we see that we may want to take advantage of and that you can actually cut in the middle or cut in the back. So I could delete this and I could edit this. So say, for example, I'm going to actually delete this. So trim start and end. So say, for example, you have a video and you know that you stumbled upon the very beginning. You're like, all right, well, around five seconds, it's five seconds is really when it started. And I think it really only lasted 42 seconds. You could actually trim this video and say, click, and say, commit. And it actually does still say that the original video can be viewed or downloaded. And, but this is really just for the individuals that can only view the video. So individuals that have edit access can access the whole, the whole video, but those that have view access can only view certain, the trimmed version of the uh, video. Once you have this all said and done and you think that it's about ready to be released, we can go to the share. So there's share, copy link, copy link at current time, embed code. So let's talk about the share features. So there are a couple of options here that you can make the video. So we can, if individuals are working on this video with you, you can say you can edit it. Uh, if you are sharing this with students and it, you want them to only be able to view it, you can actually say can view it. There's also this can't download version um, uh, setting. And this means you can view it, but not download it. So if you really want the students to be able to view it, but not download it, then you can actually choose this option. So we're just gonna do can view. And you wanna, this is where you would add the names of the groups or the emails. For example, if you would like to send this or create a link to this in your Canvas course, you could actually then hit the gear icon and you have specific options here. You have anyone, so that's everyone. It can be shared with anyone, does not require a sign-in. People at New York Institute of Technology, so that would be, they would, account was required, so this would be our community. People with existing access, so these are the people that you, um, that already have access to this uh, information. And then the people that you choose. So let's just go to people of New York Tech. So I can share with anybody who's in the New York Tech organization and they can view this. So I can hit apply. This is where I can hit copy link and then I could actually copy the link and send it to them. One thing that you may want to do if you are sharing this in the course is if you go to share and you go to embed code. So what this allows you to do is this will actually be allowed uh, to in a um, video. So it says that embed this in a blog or web page, only viewers with access will be able to see the video. This is where you really want to make sure that you have it for all people in the New York Institute of Technology can view this video because then they can view it in the Canvas course. And all you would have to do is you can obviously modify the size as necessary but you would just have to copy this uh, iframe, copy the embed code, and then place it into your Canvas course.